Welcome to I Lecture Online. We're now going to answer the question, what are alkanes? Remember that there were two main groups to organic molecules, one called the aliphatics. They're the ones that do not have a benzene ring, and the aromatics, the ones that do contain the benzene ring. Of the type, where we call them the aliphatics, we have three different subgroups, the alkanes, the alkenes and the alkynes, and we're going to be talking about the alkanes with an A, which means those are compounds that only have single bonds between the carbon atoms. The alkenes have at least a double bond, and the alkynes have at least a triple bond. So the definition is that they are organic molecules called aliphatics, again, without the benzene ring, that are saturated. And when you say they're saturated, that means they can only have one, car one bond between the carbon atoms because the carbon atoms have as many hydrogen atoms attached to them as they possibly can. That's, what we call, that's why we call them saturated. They form different structures. They form linear chains, they form structural isomers, and they form cycloalkanes, which are uh, chains that close in on themselves and form closed loops. So of the linear chains, there are, of course, many, many different kinds. Each time, we simply add one additional carbon to form the next type of chain. Starting with a single carbon, we have methane with four hydrogens. Two carbons, we have ethane with six hydrogens. Three carbons, we have propane with eight hydrogens. And four carbons, we have butane with ten hydrogens. So you see the chemical form is CH4, C2H6, C3H8, and C4H10, and you can see the pattern, the general formula for these are as follows. It is C sub N, H 2N plus 2. In other words, there are two more than twice as many hydrogens for each carbon. One carbon, double that, you get two, add two more, you get four, and that's where this formula came from. Let's now jump to the cycloalkanes. What happens when you take those chains and you make a closed loop? Obviously, you can't do that with methane or ethane. There's simply not enough carbons. But when there's three of them, you can actually make a triangular shape. When you come up here, you can see that propane now is called cyclopropane because the hydrogens are now attached and make a full loop, in this case a triangle loop. And notice you now have less hydrogens because there's less places where the hydrogens can bond. It is still saturated because it holds as many hydrogens as possible. And notice that the general formula for, cyclo, for uh, cycloalkanes in this case would be you have three carbons and six hydrogens, so that would be CnH2n is the general formula for a cycloalkane. Here we have an example of a cyclobutane. Again, you take a butane with four carbons, you chain it around, and then you reattach themselves at the end. Now you have a full circle, or in this case a square-shaped a chain that is attached together at the ends. Notice four carbons, eight hydrogens, two hydrogens per carbon when you have a cycloalkane. A structure isomer is where you attach a functional group at the location where otherwise you would have a hydrogen. So you take the hydrogen away and you put in its place what we would call a methane with one hydrogen missing so the carbons can make the bond. This is called a methyl subfunction or subgroup. I shouldn't call it subfunction, it's a methyl subgroup. So you take a methane atom, remove a hydrogen, and then attach it to a chain, an alkane chain, remove a hydrogen, attach it. And so this is now called a, a structural isomer. The reason why we call the structural isomer is because it has the same chemical formula. This is still four carbons and still 10 hydrogens, just like butane has here. You can count them all up. So you have two, four, six, eight, 10 hydrogens. So the form is still the same, C sub N, H2N plus 2. It has two more than twice the hydrogens compared to each carbon. But it's in a different structure, and that's why they call it an isomer. And the more carbons you have in the chain, the more various structural isomers you can have for a single type of alkane. And we'll look at that in some more detail as well. This particular one is called isobutane. It's also called 2-methylpropane, meaning that there's a methyl group attached to the second carbon in the chain, and now you call this a propane chain. So you have a propane chain of three carbons, 
and a methyl group attached to the second carbon. So two methyl propane, same as isobutane. So those are different ways in which you can have different structures, even though you have the same chemical formula. So hopefully that gives you a fairly good idea of what alkanes are. They're basically organic molecules that have carbon chains, which simple, simply a single bond between all the carbons. They can be in a chain, they can be in a closed loop, then they call them cycloalkanes, or they can have structural isomers where you have, we have uh, functional groups attached to them, forming a different shape, but with the same number of carbons and hydrogens. And that's what we mean by alkanes.